Welcome back to the show. Today, we will be talking about positive expectancy. So if you've never heard this word, I want to tell you a little bit first what it'll do for you. So when you are positively expectant, you're more creative. You have more motivation, energy, hope, a deep, unbreakable faith that tomorrow is going to be better than today. And Zig Ziglar defines success exactly like that. One of the seven parts of his definition of success is that you believe that tomorrow is going to be better than today. And I can tell you that this attitude is the number one ingredient to experience success in your life. Winners expect to win in advance. They have a sense of positive expectancy. And because of that, I want to read you a little bit of a quote from one of my favorite books, The Psychology of Winning by Dennis Waitley. He says, there never was a winner that didn't expect to exp who didn't expect to win in advance. Winners understand that life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And they know that you usually get what you expect in the long run. So I'll pause there to just say and repeat that last sentence. They know that you usually get what you expect in the long run. Winners don't expect to get what they want. They expect to get what they're expecting. So that's a very important distinction. Now let's look at the opposite of this positive expectancy attitude. When you have fears, you are expecting that something bad's gonna happen. And often that's where the acronym for fear, false evidence appearing real, comes from because you're expecting that the bad thing is gonna happen and you're dreading it, you're filled with trepidation and fear. And this is not how motivating creative energy flows. So when we are trying to design our dream life and become the people that we were made to be, we have to have a sense of positive self-expectancy. So the best way that I, I can describe this is with, like for your thoughts specifically, is with a plant. So did you know that the number one element for a seed to start growing, for it to be germinated, and then change into this plant that has erupted from the soil. The number one ingredient is water. So water activates the germination process by softening the seed's exterior coat. This allows it to absorb nutrients and it triggers the seed to start sprouting. Without water, a seed remains dormant even with sunlight, oxygen, soil, nutrients. Water is the key element that kickstarts growth. So in this analogy, I want you to think about your thoughts as water. Your thoughts spur your emotions, which then spur your actions, which then spur your results. It starts with your thoughts. So you can't see the growth of what your thoughts are producing. You can't see it, it's still underground. But when you have the right kind of water, watering your thoughts, then you can then take action. So let's look at what happens when you water a plant with the wrong kind of water, something that is salty, for example. So salt water is actually toxic to the seed. Yes, it is water, so we can take this analogy. Yes, it is still a thought, but it's permeated with salt. And that salt dehydrates any growth that could happen. So what often happens is we go about our day and we have all of these different thoughts that go about our mind. I believe I once read that we have, don't quote me on this, I think it's somewhere around 300,000 different thoughts every single day. And I could be getting my numbers wrong here, but that's what I'm remembering. These thoughts are what waters your actions. So in our analogy, where the seed is the life you're trying, like the plant is the life that you're trying to grow. So look at that plant right there. The plant represents the life you're trying to grow. The seed represents where you're at right now, not having seen the fruit yet. 
and the water you're pouring on that seed represents your thoughts. So when you water a seed with salt water, the high concentration can actually prevent the seed from absorbing water properly. This happens because of a process called osmosis. So scientifically speaking, the water moves from areas of low solute concentration, like fresh water is low solute, and it moves to areas of high solute concentration, like salty soil or salty water. So when a seed is actually exposed to the salt water, instead of absorbing the moisture it needs to germinate, it will actually lose water. So the very thoughts that we think is going to get us to the right actions, to, that's going to get us to that life that we're dreaming about, the seedling you're creating is then weak and stunted because your thoughts aren't correct. The, the voice that you're hearing telling you stories in your mind, it is not fruitful. So what we need to do is figure out what are the thoughts we're thinking and categorize them. Is this freshwater thoughts or salty thoughts? And fear, so if we come back full circle around back to fear, which is the opposite of positive self-expectancy, it dehydrates our ability to move forward because it drains our confidence and hope, just like the water is being drained out of that seed and replaced with the salt. So instead of nourishing our goals and dreams with belief and positive expectancy, we actually poison our mindset with fear. And this leaves us stagnant and shrinking back. So in the same way that a seed can't grow in salty conditions, we struggle to take action when fear overshadows our thoughts. So in order to thrive, we need water. We need to water our minds with courage, hope, trust, belief. So the self-expectancy essentially becomes the correct kind of water that we're watering our thoughts with, then that will produce the right emotions and emotion. Think about the root of the word. The word is motion. That puts us into action. And then with our actions, we produce results. And those results are really what you want, right? You want to have a life that is like a vibrant plant, not like a dehydrated seed with barely the roots to support the kind of life that you really want. So keep every thought captive. This is step number one. Keep every thought captive, check your beliefs, switch off the limiting beliefs and replace them with beliefs of self expectancy or rather positive expectancy. So Part two is we need to have a vision. So look at that plant right there. This is our vision, where we want our life to go. We know that it is vibrant, it is beautiful, the branches people can come and hang a swing from. You can go have a picnic underneath it. There's all this fruit, it's nourishing. But if you don't have the roots, so that is a fake plant, and if you're listening to the podcast, I'm pointing at a plant that you might have seen on my Instagram. It's in the background. It's a fake plant. It does not have the roots. It only has the appearance of success. People who only have the appearance of success, they have one ingredient missing, and that is enthusiasm. The only difference between a true winner and someone who only has the appearance of success is their belief. So the person who never stopped believing is the one who has this unwavering vision. And this makes me think of Helen Keller's quote. I'm probably going to butcher it, but I'm going to give it a try because it's one of my favorites. It is not because of lack of sight that people fail. It is because of lack of vision. And if you know anything about Helen Keller, she was blind deaf and mute, but yet she became one of the greatest and most renowned thought leaders. She had an unwavering vision. She had positive self expectancy. And what I need you to do to have that positive self expectancy is always maintain your enthusiasm. Enthusiasm allows you to live knowing you're not going to die with your music still in you. So this brings me to part three of today's video. 
You need to live out your day doing the actions of someone who has hope for the future. So John Maxwell says, when you have hope for the future, you have power in the present. And power in the present, think about the word power. We generally only have power over two things, our attitude, hint, 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 here's our self-expectancy. So we have control over our attitude and our actions. Now our actions are fueled by our attitude. I have a little bit of a story to tell you here about attitude. So my mother-in-law, her name's Marilyn, she is one of the most positively expectant people that I have ever encountered. And the reason I say this is because we recently moved to a property of 150 acres because of her positive self-expectancy. And that's a story in and of itself, which I may actually have her or my husband come on the podcast to tell. But the, the coolest thing that happened to us in the last month is we have 90, 90, 90 horses on this property now. So I'll tell you a little bit about that story. So my husband, David, and his mom were driving down the road and they saw this sign, horses for sale. And my mother-in-law, she was like, David, we have to pull over. We have to go talk to this guy, see if we could, have, we, if we could get some horses. And my husband was thinking, well, well, I guess it's worth a try, but we probably can't afford any right now. We just moved all these different things. So my mother-in-law, she goes to talk to this cowboy and we find, they find out that he is actually looking for land for his horses. And next thing we know, he's dropping off trailer after trailer after trailer of horses. There is now, as I'm recording this, 90 horses on our property and we get to go visit them every day. Now, craziest part, well, two crazy things. I'm going to tell you the first one. We didn't pay a cent to have these horses on our property. And... Secondly, we live in an area where fire, like forest fires are actually quite dangerous. Like there's a fire risk and these horses are mowing our grass for us and they are lowering our fire risk. That is what an attitude of positive self-expectancy will do for you. So someone who has this belief, they believe, first of all, their future is going to be fantastic. They know without a doubt that God has the most amazing future plan for them. There's this psalm that's coming to mind right now. King David, he says, I have a beautiful inheritance. And that is what someone has who has positive self-expectancy does. Now, if you're listening to this and you're going through a really hard time in your life right now, you're struggling with anxiety, depression, whatever it may be, I want you to know that there's very specific actions you can take to start developing, first of all, the, the dopamine in your brain. Dopamine is going to give you a lot more motivation and expectancy, excitement for the future. There's a way that you can actually raise your dopamine levels by 9% in just three minutes. Now, dopamine, before I tell you how to do, to do that in just three minutes... Dopamine is a neural transmitter. So what that means for you is it connects different parts of your brain so that you can think faster, you have more motivation and energy. Dopamine is a feel-good hormone. It makes us want to go out and do something, whether good or bad. It's definitely a motivator. And the root of the word motivate is motive. So it gives us a motive to do something. And when we have dopamine in the right quantities, we actually have less symptoms of ADHD. And this just blew my mind. So research shows, and here's the answer to our, our riddle of how do I actually create more dopamine in my brain in just three minutes. Research shows that pleasurable music increases dopamine levels in the brain by up to 9%. This neurotransmitter responsible for regulating attention working memory and motivation is in low supply in ADHD brains. 
So for you, that means that you can sit down and actually complete a two hour focused work session without being distracted, without feeling depressed, without looking for distractions or going to your fridge for a snack or sugar to get this extra boost of dopamine. You are gonna have sustained dopamine for 24 hours with music. There is absolutely a way. So what I want to end this video with, or podcast episode, if you're the one listening, is that distractions, which come from a, a low supply of dopamine in your brain, distractions are subtractions of your focus and passion. And recently, in the middle of September 2024, I went to a sales training. I was talking to hundreds, like, well, probably 112, so not quite hundreds, but I was talking to a lot of high level entrepreneurs. And one of the common threads that I noticed is that they struggle with second guessing themselves. They struggle with focus and follow through. And they always have these genius ideas, like they have no lack of creativity. The thing they follow, follow or rather that they struggle with is follow through on those brilliant ideas. And I myself have definitely struggled with this too. I specifically remember myself saying to a friend in conversation, oh, this is a genius idea. And I wanted to take action on that idea right away. But on further thought, I realized, okay, this is something that maybe should wait a little bit because I'm still working on another area. But I know now that I have a way to produce more dopamine in my brain. I'm very strategic with this. And that that thought will still be there for me when I'm ready. You can have this too. You can have focus, meaning following one course until success. One of my favorite acronyms for the word focus. And this is possible for you. So there are two things that you can do right now to produce more dopamine in your brain instantly and skyrocket your dopamine by for like for 24 hours. So the first thing that you can do is download the dopamine playlists. I have specific mu musical pieces that I've put together in playlists. I have an Apple Music one, a YouTube one, a Spotify one is coming. You can actually go to the show notes and download that right, right now and hit play and have that on while you're washing the dishes, while you're working. This is an amazing way to calm down your kids if you have toddlers who just need a little bit of help regulating their emotions. This playlist will be phenomenal for that. So that link is in the show notes. You can go ahead and download that. So this will raise your dopamine levels by 9% in just three minutes. Now, the other thing that you can do is sign up for the next Make Music Challenge. And a little bit different one than what the name is. So the name is Make Music. You do not need any musical ability. You do not need a cello. You don't need any instrument. You can literally come to the challenge not being able to hold a tune in a bucket and you will walk away with tools to increase that dopamine in your brain for sustained productivity, for joyful productivity. And I know that that is what you really want, right? You wanna walk through your day knowing that number one, you're gonna end your day moving the needle. And number two, that it's going to actually bring you to that plant that you want, that big, flourishing, beautiful business of your dreams. And that's really what you want, isn't it? So go ahead and sign up for the Make Music Challenge in the recording of this episode. It, the next one is October 22nd to the 25th. I cannot wait to see you there. So go and water your actions with the right kind of thoughts. Create your vision that you live through with enthusiasm and, it's, and positive expectancy. And then take action today as someone who expects the future to be beautiful. Increase that dopamine in your brain so that you can have positive self-expectancy. And either do that by downloading the Dopamine Boosting Cello Playlist or sign up for the Make Music Challenge. Those are your next steps and I cannot wait to see which one you take. Have a wonderful day.